Hey, hi, how you doing? I'm good, thanks. I just want to go back into your past a little bit and just, mm -hmm. just tell me how you got into boxing. How I got into boxing? Um, I remember I got kicked out of school. I was young, probably 16, something like that. And um, there was a youth club. And, um, you know, we used to go there, play pool, snooker, relax, chill. It was a chill spot for us. And then they had a boxing coach that came in and everyone went in the hall and started to get gloves on and started to box. And that week I was like, nah, forget boxing. Boxing ain't my thing. So I didn't go there that week. And then the next Wednesday, the following Wednesday, the same coach came back. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. And I went back every single Wednesday. I went back to the point where when the funding stopped, they couldn't afford him anymore. He got my phone number and took me down to boxing gym. And he kept me in the boxing gym every day because I wasn't in school. You know, I got kicked out of my school. So he had me in a boxing gym every day and he kept me there from the morning until night. I was the first one in, in the gym and the last one out. I know it's what people say sometimes. You know, sometimes people say first, first one in the gym, last one out. I, that, that actually was me um, at one time of my life. And um, I'm still doing it today. Yeah, I mean, he must have seen some potential in you then to actually bother to ring you up and get you in. I don't think it was the potential because I wasn't good when I first got into boxing, I wasn't good. I think it was more the consistency. And he was a big believer in whether you're good at something or not. If you're consistent, you will learn it. And they say that hard work will beat talent if talent doesn't work hard. And I believe that's me. I believe I'm, I'm a little bit talented, but I work, but I'm a hard worker ultimately. I, I read somewhere that you said that if you, hadn't, if you hadn't stuck with the boxing, then you could have got into quite a lot of bother. Do you know what's funny about that? Only today I was speaking to one of my friends and, um, from the area that I come from. And we was, I started asking him about all my other friends. And only today I realized that a lot of them are in jail. And people that I went to school with, and like, they were the smart ones in school, the people that got the grades, and, and today they're in jail. And they, these are the people that I used to hang around with on a daily basis. So I know that if I stayed around them, I would have followed the same path, because you're only as good as the people that you hang around with. Yeah, I know it's almost a bit of peer pressure as well. If, if, if everyone else yeah. is doing it, then mm -hmm. you, you have to sort of get involved, don't you? Exactly. Yeah, so that's why I'm always thankful that I've, got, that I've got into boxing. I feel like boxing should be in every area, in every youth club, because in, a, in, 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 in the ghetto, I'll say is bundles of untouched potential. People there, they've got all the potential in the world, and that genius level of talent is in them. They just have to find it. I feel like we should be putting opportunities out in these areas. I'm just one person I've got into boxing. There could be another O'Hara Davis in a hundred different areas, but we're not going to find them because boxing's not in their youth clubs, in, it's not in their youth centres. So we tell them to not do crime. We tell them what not, we, so we tell them what they shouldn't do, but we don't give them the opportunities to find what they should and what they want to do. And so when you, you're obviously taken on, and you, like you say, you were first in, last out of the gym, when did you start to realise, actually, I, I, I could make some money out of doing this? My second fight as a pro. I mean, as an amateur. My second fight as an amateur, I knocked this guy out. Boom, round two. And I just hit through the right hand and he was on the floor. And I looked up to my coach at that time, Tony Sesse. I was like, this guy's on the floor. He was like, yes, yeah, son. You quit him with a good shot. I was like, this boxing thing could work. <laughs> and... Um, you know, I won all my fights as an amateur and um, I realised that I could be good at this, you know what I mean, as long as I... It, it, wasn't, it wasn't more something that I was looking at making a career out of, it was just something that I loved, it was a hobby. I wasn't about the money, I wasn't thinking about the money because there wasn't any money. I wasn't thinking about the future, fame and cars, I was just thinking about I love what I do. It was a hobby and a hobby turned into a job. Yeah, and, and, and now here you are, you just, you, you've got a fight coming up against Jack Catterall. Mm win that and it's probably not going to be long before you're in for a world title. 100%. Um, I've been working hard for this fight. If there's any camp that I've ever worked hard for, it's been this, it's been this camp. Kelcho is a good opponent. I'm beaten. I'm coming into this fight as the challenger. I've got the underdog's mindset, the underdog's mentality and I'm coming to, I'm coming to take over. I'm coming to take over. I didn't, I'm not training 24-7 for no reason. If I'm working this hard in the gym, there has to be a positive outcome and I refuse to lose, I refuse. And I know you're confident, but it's fair to say he's no pushover, whatever you sort of joke and say about this and that and the other. I mean, he's a decent fighter, I think. He's not decent, he's a good fighter. He's a, he's, a, he's a really good fighter. This is the biggest fight of his boxing career. It's not the biggest fight of my boxing career. I've been under, the, I've been under those lights. I know how to handle 
I know how to handle it when there's a fight of this magnitude, which is why you see me, I'm cool, calm, relaxed, there's no hostility about me. I've been in bigger fights than this. So I know how to handle it. I know how to stay cool, calm, collected, and that's what's going to be used to my advantage um, on, on, on October the 6th. OK, just a final couple of questions. A few years ago, you visited the Mayweather gym, which I think mm. gave you the inspiration yeah. in, a, in a way. Yeah. And yeah, just talk us through that, how that came um, about, and then, yeah. I was under Tunde Ajayi at the time. Me, Anthony Yard, Junior Saba, us three went out to Vegas, um, visited Floyd's gym, we met 50 Cent a couple of times, and it was more inspiring. It was, I was so, in, I was so inspired, because I used to watch Floyd every single day on YouTube. I watched every single one of his fights to the point where I know what happened, at what second, I know what the commentator says, like, I knew it word for word. And I, look, I, I knew everything about Floyd. So I went to his gym and I saw him, and he was in the and he was in the ring, sparring, and I saw the cars that I only see on the TV. I saw all the Bugattis and all the all the amazing cars, and like I was in Vegas, waking up in Vegas, and then I met Fifty Cent, and that time I realised I'm around these guys. Like he's a human being just like me. If he can do it and I work hard, I can also I can also do it. So that's what inspired me to turn pro and to wanna and to want to become successful. And just last question, did he also influence you in the way, how you sell a fight, Mayweather? I mean, the way you go about, a, a bit of the trash talking, bit of that. Uh, it's my, Mayweather, Ali, Muhammad Ali, and ultimately WWE wrestling. I've been a massive wrestling fan from when I was young. I used to love people like Stone Cold, Steve Austin, who just didn't care, can I swear? <laughs> he didn't give a Stone Cold, he walks into that ring, he don't give a toss about anyone. He walks into the ring, he climbs on every corner of that ring, the beers get thrown and, and like he catches it. Every single time, he like, he don't, it's like he don't miss it. I'm not sure how, and it all, all pulls down. I'm like, he's drinking beer before a fight. This guy didn't care, and just that wildness, and the fact that he didn't care, I'm like, I wanna be like him. I'm not gonna care, I'm gonna say what I wanna say. I'm gonna be free, I'm gonna be me. A lot of these other boxers, they are, confined to say this, say that. They're put in a box. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a free man, I'm, and I'm always going to be a free man. It has got me into trouble at times, but it's where my happiness comes from. That's fine. But you won't drink beer before a fight? I will never drink beer before a fight. Or after. You know, I've I, I, I got to keep clean. The only, the only places that see me after a fight, Mac, McDonald's, Burger King, Five Guys, Big Moles, Wing Shack, um, what am I saying? I get Snickers, Twix, every chocolate you can think of, every unhealthy drink that you can think of, Pizza Hut, they will see me after the fight. So if any of them are watching this interview, um, you'll be seeing me soon. You'll be, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be seeing me in your local KFC very, very soon.